And good morning. The rabbits are jumping, boys and girls. The rabbits are jumping because it is March. And that's apparently what rabbits do in March. Thank you to Terry for reminding me what day it is. The 1st of March, 2014. I'm afraid the voice is playing up once again. I'm going to have to go back to the doctors with this uh, because the, the throat still doesn't feel quite right. It's been quite a few weeks now. Time to return to the doctors. Of course, being the first day in March, we have a new Barry Manilow photo behind us on the wall, boys and girls. Yes, in this one, he's wearing like a <coughs> like a maroony red coloured uh, jacket on the photo today. I only just remembered to turn that page over. Now, it's very, very dangerous. Now, as you know, big Barry Manilow fan here, but there are even bigger Barry Manilow fans out there that 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 would, you know, they would notice if I didn't have the new Barry Manilow photo displayed uh, for March behind me on the wall. They would be noticed. And you, st you start getting all these emails and things like that, you know, private ones, obviously not ones I'd read out on here, but death threats and everything like that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, I don't know if anyone noticed in the Daily Express this week, <clears throat> once again, they were saying that our Barry Manilow has had plastic surgery. I will not hear any of it, if you don't mind. He had steroid injections for his very bad hip. That's why his face has blown up. That's what he said. That's what we believe. Happy are those that see, that do not see and yet believe. Why does it say that? Somewhere else as well, I think. So there we are. Apparently, Terry H. <laughs> has got a Tom Daly calendar. Oh, dear me. A Tom Daly calendar. So do turn it over. Tell us, Terry, what, what is the picture on the front of the Tom Daly? Actually, is there a Tom? Can I find that on the internet? Tom Daly calendar. Let's see if we've got Tom Daly calendar March. Let me see if that brings anything up. <laughs> and then perhaps uh, we can have a little look at the picture. There he is. Oh, Tom Daly calendar. Uh, well, there's a few pictures. Hang on. What's March? Oh, I see. Is it, can I zoom in on that or not? Yes. Is that March? No. One minute, one minute. March. He's got like a... <laughs> bless his little light. He's trying to, trying to look all hard and sexy. He still looks like a little boy to me. <laughs> he's, he's kind of... <clears throat> he's kind of standing there in, um, I don't know, a, a black... Is that a black pair of trousers? I can't quite see because it's only a small picture. Um, now, is it that one? Oh, that's the one there. Let me see if I can... Well, I can bring that up. Just a second. One minute. Copy image. Where do I do that? Save... Sa save link as. Copy image. Save image as. Is that a save image as? Right, let's try that. Okay, one second. Tom... <laughs> Tom Daly for March. So it's all very complex here. Hang on. Takes ages to do this if you don't prepare it, you see. Tom Daly, is that him? Okay. No, that's not him. One minute. Let's try again. That don't look like the right one. Um, Date modified. It must be the one at the top, surely. Open. No, that's not working for me. Oh, how disappointing. Uh, Maybe it's a... Is it the second one? No, it's not the second one. Is it the third one? Can't be, surely. Newly saved items. Talk amongst yourselves for... No, I've lost it altogether now. Now, that's, that's not him. Let's try and save that again. Hang on a minute. Maybe I'm saving to the wrong place. Tom Daly picture. Right. Save image as newly saved items. B E. B E E. Right, OK, we'll try that then. Um, I should have given up on this a long time. Are you getting bored with this now? One minute, Tom Daly. Be isk, isk. I don't know. I can't find this. I don't know why. I, it looks like it's saving it and then it doesn't. Maybe if I save it as... as, as, as give, it, give it a file name. Um, save image as Tom Daly. Tom Daly, March. JPL, JPG Large, is that right? Right, Tom Daly, March. Now let's try. 
Because I know you want to see him, don't you? Yeah, you do. I know you do. Tom, da no, it's not there. Hang on. Tom, let's do a search. Oh, there it is. One moment, one moment. Opening. No. I don't know why, but I can't get that to, to, to go on the, um, to show you. Maybe it's because it's a large, is it? Tom Daly. See, t it comes up. Ah, hang on. No, open. No, I can't do it. I don't know why, Terry. For some reason, I can't bring that up. Now, I've already saved two little photos uh, into the system uh, for the show today. But for, for some reason, I can't get can't get those Tom Daly ones. Perhaps they've got some sort of copyright block on them or something like that. Anyway, uh, oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. I'm trying to send it to you. There we are. Let's let's try him now. So 0254. OK, I'll try. I'll try that. One minute. One minute. Millions of people all around the world are wondering what on earth. Oh, there it is. Right, that's that. And Tom Daly. Cut. There we are. Tom Daly's photograph on your screen now, boys and girls, at last. That took eight minutes to do that. That's eight minutes of the show. <laughs> eight minutes of the show gone. Just trying to find a... De desperately trying... How sad is that? Desperately trying to find a picture of Tom Daly to show you this morning. Apparently, that is the... That, is that the actual March one? Uh, do let us know, Terry. OK, if that's the actual March one. But yes, Tom Daly fans all over the world, of course, but not as many. I have to tell you, I'm sure there's not as many Tom Daly fans as there is Barry Manilow fans. And we must display the correct picture on the calendar behind me. Otherwise, you get death threats and all sorts of things like that. And we do have to be very careful. So thank you for that. Um, uh, uh, for that, Terry. And back to me. <laughs> What do you mean you prefer looking at him, do you? We've got a call coming in in a second from Millie uh, in Minnesota. You can call into the show, boys and girls. It's very easy. Just use the Skype, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. All right, that's the call in on the Skype, Chris Reardon. You can hit the call button and uh, talk to me while we're doing the show, assuming that you are with us live. And if it's just coming up to 10 past 12 on Saturday, the 1st of March, 2014, you are indeed with us live and you can join in live. Either by Skype, Skype username Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, or by phone in number as well, which is 020 8133. 6358, okay? 020 8133 6358. And there it is. For those of you watching the uh, uh, show live, it's in the top left hand corner now, all the phone in details. All right, so we'll give her, uh, Millie a quick call. So she did She did prepare me for the call earlier. She said, <coughs> I would like to call in today. So Millie is on the phone now, all the way from Minnesota in the US of A, where it is cold still, I wonder, Millie. Yes, it is. I hate winter. Oh. Get me out of here. It's gone on and on, isn't it, my darling? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you are not kidding. <laughs> Tell us all about it. Oh, my Lord. Well, you know, it's it's hard anyway yeah. in Minnesota winter. But for me, it's twice as hard as it would be for the average person because... I happen to have um, cerebral palsy, for those that don't know, and mm. that affects my all four of my limbs and my muscles and joints. Right. And when cold hits my muscles, oh my God, I mean, pain, excruciating. Yes, uh, a lady, um, do you remember Joy in Acton, the elderly lady we used to speak I to? I do, I yep. do, yes. Yep. Yep, well, she's, um, she has exactly the same, not cerebral palsy, but her age, and she says a little bit of cold and everything starts hurting. So she has yep. her heating on in the house all the time, you know. Yep. Mm-hmm. I've even had to resort to that. And I never, ever have before because I happen to live on uh, the second floor of my yes. building and heat rises 
normally. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. I mean, that's that's quite handy living up there like that. You've got someone underneath you using all their heat. I like the idea of that, my, um, uh, Millie. Yes, but it's been so cold here in Minnesota lately that I've had to resort to getting my heating mm. on. What sort of temperatures are we talking? We're talking, um, let's see, about 16 below zero uh, Fahrenheit. <coughs> And your Fahrenheit, so that would be that must be minus uh, sixteen, thirty-two. Not minus. That can't be minus thirty odd, can it? Sixteen. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what that is, but it, it's well below freezing. If it's, it, let me tell you, boys and girls, those of you that work in centigrade, naught degree, naught degrees Fahrenheit is much lower than naught degrees centigrade. OK, so she, she's well in the, in the double minus figures there. Oh, nasty. See, we haven't had it this year. We, well, I can't honestly say it's been very cold for any long period of time. Um, certainly at the moment, it's pretty mild out there, about eight or nine degrees, whereas we should be experiencing like two of, you know, the, the, the one, two and three degrees or, or zeros that we experienced at most winters, we just haven't had. We've had a lot of rain, as you probably saw in the uh, news, but yes. no, no real cold weather to talk about at all maybe an, an odd day here and an odd day there no frost on the ground at night nothing oh you guys absolutely stink i'll tell you i mean <laughs> send some of that stuff here let me tell you yeah. i mean like i said get me out of here this yes this i mean i don't like minnesota winters even at the best of times right but this one has been awful mm. It's been terrible. I feel sorry for you. Have you got a little blanket over your knees while you're talking? To me? Are you still in bed? Or, of course, it's yep. like at seven o'clock in the morning. Is it? What's the time there? It's about twelve minutes after six in the morning. Twelve here. past six in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep, and it's dark. What time do you get up for breakfast then? Oh my goodness, I've been. I haven't had breakfast yet, but I've been awake for hours. Right. Um. But I do have a quick question for you yes, yes. while I've got while I've got you here. Um, actually, it's from my from my dear mother. Yes, she wants to know because, as you know, we're getting together on seven April. Yes, she wants to know what time um, would be good for you. Oh, uh, I don't know. What, what time do you what, what time do you want to meet up? And, uh, and where? And where? Remember, I'm going to be staying at the at the Waldorf Hilton. Yes. She and my she and my mom, uh, she and my auntie want to come there and meet meet us have us meet up there. Okay. And, and have us up for a meal. Oh, so you want a, a sort of night time? I don't know about um, eight o'clock. How's that sound? Eight p.m. Seven p.m. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Seven. Which one? Seven or eight? Oh, well, mom I says. Mom says they're open. You you ask her what time are we are we having dinner at the hotel? Yes, yes, and they're Ooh, insisting lovely. that it be their turn. Oh, I love I love to buy a suit. I, I mean, I'm you know, there's me and me my t shirts and things like. I'm gonna have to buy a suit, aren't I? And sweetie, it's the uh, Waldorf Hilton in Covent Garden. Oh my God! I mean, I don't know if they're allowing me in there. They will. <laughs> They will, or I'll pick up a stink. You don't worry about that. That that date is already sorted. Um, if I, I I can do seven o'clock if you want. If you want to meet an hour early, earlier seven. Sure, seven's fine. Is seven that okay? Is fine. Yep. All right. Well, we'll do that then. I'm really looking forward to that, Millie, and as well as meeting yourself, your mum as well. Yep. And my auntie Sandra, her yeah. um, her her youngest, my mom's youngest sister Sandra is going to yes. be be with us as well so there'll be th the three of us fantastic uh, tell me what <laughs> other things are you going to do while you're while you're how long are you here for is it one week or two weeks two weeks two weeks and what uh, what other plans have you got during that time well you know what um to be honest with you chris um this visit is going to be a little bit more laid back than the last one was yeah uh, because the last one, I'd never been to the UK before, and it was a case of what do I absolutely need to see and do before yes. I leave. Right. But this one is a bit more laid back because mm. um, the reason why I wanted to come back in the first place is because um, 
as you know, I've had a very difficult time coping with my dad's passing. And I had thought that perhaps spending some time with people that were with me from the time he got he had a stroke and got his yes. initial cancer diagnosis on up well, through the end. I, I would say to you, you know, I, I think you should still work out a bit of a diary, um, which is really the, the first time I have ever done that was, was when I went to Disney with, with my nephew. I'm sure you saw the right. little, little videos I did. there. I did. And, I did. and it was much better. I, I, I've In the past, I've gone on a holiday and, and done exactly the same as you. Oh, well, I'll just get there and work it out as I go around. Well, and we are sort of working. We are sort of <clears throat> working on something, right? But I mean, it's not. It's not going to be, you know, because last time it was rush, rush, rush. Go here, go there, go here, go yes. there. It's not going to be like that this time. We do uh, have a couple of things. Has your mum been here before? Um. Yes. So All right. Okay. So, you, so you roughly know what's what, then, don't you? Mm. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, um, the UK was always one of my father's favorite places. Right. And she's never been, she hasn't been back since, well, she hasn't been back for any decent length of time since my dad died. Okay. Um, and my Aunt Sandra, she is the husband, she is the wife of my uncle that passed in 08. Yes. The one that did all that stuff for me. I remember, well, yeah, I, yeah. Well, my uncle and had a timeshare each year, a two-week timeshare. Yeah. And just so happened that one of, that one of the weeks opened up um, during the time that I was that I was going to be. You, uh, at, he he has a timeshare in this country, does he? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, whereabouts is that then? Sloan Square. Oh wow. Okay. I I, I didn't know such things. Ex I don't. I mean, obviously they must do. I suppose when I think about it, I, you never think about a timeshare in your own country. You know, uh, certainly I've been to places, including Disney, and you, they've got these little desks all over the country uh, selling the Disney vacation timeshare, haven't they? I, I don't know if you've ever seen those. Yes, uh-huh. <clears throat> yeah. And um, yeah. Uh, trying to push those and what have you. But I never really thought of uh, having timeshares in my own country sort of thing. And Sloan Square, I mean, that, that's a very, uh, very, very expensive area around there. Very expensive. Yes. Well, my uncle was uh, very well off. Yes. Um, what he actually did for a living was um, he he built a medical supply company from the ground up yes. called Universal Hospital Services. And when he married my Aunt Beverly, who is no longer with us anymore either, originally she was a nurse. Right. Yes. But but eventually she stopped doing that, and took all of the prior knowledge that she had in the medical community and used it to help my uncle continue to build the company up until it was one of the biggest ones in the world by the time he by the time they retired. Okay. So when. So when my uncle passed away, you know, the timeshare reverted over to my Aunt Sandra. Right. And it's two weeks a year. <clears throat> yes, that's, that's all right. That's, that's enough. That's enough. Yep. I, and... I've never thought of the timeshares um, buying something like that. I, I think you're, you're kind of restricted to the same place all the time, though, aren't you? Unless, of course, I suppose you can sell your weeks, can you? Does, does that happen much? Um. It can, but my my auntie has not done that, right? To my knowledge, um, but I think um, you know my mom is really excited about meeting you, and so is my auntie. I mean, they hear so much about you from me; <laughs> they already feel like they know you. They tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. I should look forward to that then, Millie. Yep. And watch out, you're going to get broken ribs with the hug you're going to get from me. It's going to be a big one. <laughs> oh, Millie. Well, thanks uh, for calling in. Always a pleasure to talk to you, my darling. Okay. All right. All right. Lots Here we are, Millie. Darling. And wrap up warm, dear. Wrap up warm. I am. Don't worry. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> Ta-da, love. Bye. There we are. Lovely. Oh, you want to keep... Lovely Millie in Minnesota. Regular callie to the program. It's nice to have her calling in and meeting up with her on the 7th of uh, April, which I'm very much looking forward to.
Um, now, what are we? What, I can't remember where I was going to today. I've got a few, a few uh, uh, little little stories today from the paper. Oh, I've got to say hello to uh, Ronan today. First time watching the live stream. Sadly, can only watch to twelve thirty. Are you going out somewhere, Ronan, today? Then you disappearing out and uh, doing a bit of shopping, eh? Be your thing. Uh, <clears throat> Hello to Vectis. Good morning to Vectis on the Isle of Wight. He's with us this morning as well. Uh, some stories. I, I am shocked and horrified, boys and girls. I am shocked and horrified. You know when there's something around that's been around like for... Oh, and good morning to Marge, who's with us as well in Oklahoma. Good morning, Marge. Sending me a picture of a little, little dancing, walking man. Thank you, Marge. Um, when something's been around for ages and ages, I, I, it, it's always a shame to see it disappear. Well... In the UK, and I'm sure across wherever you are in the world, we have a company called Birdseye. Captain Birdseye, Captain Birdseye, you know the one? Well, story in today's Daily Mail, frozen food giant Birdseye is set to axe its beloved advertising figurehead, Captain Birdseye, after nearly 50 years. Shock horror, I am disappointed. I am disappointed, I really am. Uh, the sea captain has long graced Britain's TV screens as the face of products uh, like Fish Fingers and Frozen Peas, but the firm is launching another, a new 16 million advertising campaign without his famous face in a bid to appeal to a younger generation. This keeps happening, doesn't it? Have you noticed that? How all the people who are of an age are pushed aside for someone younger. You've only got to see it on the television. Absolutely dire programmes on the telly, hosted, presented by people, starring people who are young, and have, in my opinion, absolutely no talent whatsoever. What is all that about? It's just awful. Awful. Captain Birdseye, whose, pra whose, whose catchphrase was, only the best for the captain's table, first appeared in the company's adverts in 1967. Well, at, le at least. <laughs> so that's less than, less than the time I've been lucky enough to be on this planet. And uh, I think it's just a great shame, don't you? I really do think it's a great shame. Um, when when stuff like that's happened, I, I felt it was a great shame when um, uh, Cadbury's were taken over by Nestle. Is it Nestle or Kit Kat? One of the two. I, got, I don't know. I thought that was a great shame, and they've changed the shape of the chocolates. This has also led to an odd change in the way it tastes. Now, Cadbury's tell us that they have not changed the recipe. Remember, Cadbury's are now owned by an American firm. They swear blind they have not changed the recipe. Yet to me, it tastes different. In fact, I've stopped eating it. I've stopped eating Cadbury's chocolate. It doesn't taste the same anymore. I've gone, gone on to Galaxy, which is a, 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 a taste I also like, quite like Galaxy. Cadbury's chocolate does not taste the same anymore. Has anyone else found this? As I say, they absolutely swear blind that they haven't changed the recipe. Tastes different to me. The shape is different. They say, I remember reading this somewhere, that the shape of the chocolate has made it taste different. We'll change the shape back again, you bloody idiots. Who do you think you are changing a tradition in this country just because you bought them. Why have you changed it? You haven't improved it. I've stopped eating your chocolate now. And another thing they keep doing is bringing out new products. Cadbury's chocolate with, like, jelly beans and stuff like that. Now, I thought I'd try one. I thought, I'll give that a go. That looks nice. Oh, my God, it is so sweet and sickly. It's vile. Anyone else had that? You know, I think they're called Cadbury's Creations. Have you tried that? Oh, it's horrible. All sweet and sickly and nasty. Not nice at all. Got a phone call coming in. Good morning. Who's Hello. on line 2517? 
I'm watching your video, Keith George. How are you? Who's Keith George? <sighs> you look a bit like him on there. I beg your pardon. I look nothing like Keith George. I think you find I look a lot younger. I, I, I do agree with you. The, the camera does sh- shave years off of you, dear. How are you? <laughs> now, who's that? It's Daniel. Daniel? From the West Five. Oh, it's Dan Wood. Good morning, Dan Wood. And tell us about your new beautiful little cat. I bet he's just attacking my dirty sock that I just threw on the floor. He's doing what? He's just attacked his dirty sock that I threw uh, on the floor. Oh, please, remove that disgusting, filthy sock before that poor thing passes out and dies for the stench coming off it. <laughs> You were the last last night, Chris. He got stuck on the you know Excuse you know me. your bed, <laughs> bed at the back of the bed. Sorry, Dan. He jumped up there. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> start again. Start again. Sorry, so you know the bed, uh, your bedstead at the back. Well, I don't know. You, you know your headrest. But I don't he have one of those. Up there last night. I don't have one of those. They cost more money. All you need is the bed. Why do you need that bit behind you? Wasting they money, come. Daniel. You're not known for wasting money, dear. It come with the airbed there. <coughs> he, uh, he got stuck up there and he fell behind it and he was meowing away and I was ignoring him. <laughs> and then I realised he was stuck behind my head. <laughs> Bless him. That's, they get stuck up trees, you know. They what do get, that, sorry? They do get stuck up trees, you know. Well, he's an indoor cat. Well, yeah, well, he'll probably escape at some point. Do be careful. My I neighbour... My neighbour had a cat years ago, and there were two occasions where um, they got a ladder out, and one occasion where they had to get someone out to get the cat down off the tree. <laughs> and I, I was waking up because I go for a little sleep in the afternoon, and I was woken up one summer after one summer sort of early evening by this meowing, and there it is stuck <laughs> at the tree, meowing its head off. <laughs> no, he's uh, he's very playful today. We love he's cats. We absolutely love cats. And I'm so glad you've become a cat person. But I'm a bit upset. You might be able to help me with this. Yes. Chris Reardon's things, problems. Can I help you? All Things Burt. Yes. Uh, on Facebook. Oh, uh, right. Has less than his sister's page. <clears throat> uh, Night and Faye or whatever it is. So I think you, you, all your listeners should click on to All Things Burt. Let me have and a little Bert. quick look there. Okay. Yes, the... Oh, 24 likes. Oh you're, oh, you're not worried about numbers, are you? Well, his sister's got 33 <clears throat> likes, I think. So, you know. <sighs> well, I have liked already, so I can't do that. All right, boys and girls. Um, if you have a look on Facebook, the Facebook user... The, the Facebook group, All Things Burt, OK? A-L-L-T-H-I-N-G-S-B-E-R-T. All Things Burt... OK, and have a look there. there. There's pictures of this beautiful new little cat. It's got half a moustache, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Let me just click on a little picture. It's got, like, if you look at look at the cat's face front on, then on the right-hand side, it's a little white bit. And on the left-hand side, it's black. And it's a beautiful little cat. And it's just a shame, uh, Mr Wood, that you didn't tidy up your bedroom before you took the pictures. You know, there I can see an old pair of jeans. And they look a little bit too small for you, to be honest. Good God. Can't believe they're those. You're from a moment. And on the back, there's all this cleaning fluid and little bits that actually look stolen from the club that you work in, that, that little cleaning thing. Would I be right in saying that? You might have borrowed that from the club there. What, Febreze? And... and <laughs> Is that, is that to put on your socks? Is it the Febreze? No, no, no. Is the it... Febreze is my own, dear. The <laughs> polish next to it, however, may have come from the club. Yes, I noticed that. <laughs> I have a little word with bow about that. And uh, oh. what is that underneath? Is that your extensive cooking facilities? The small microwave? Is that it? <laughs> well, for my bedroom, you, you can't oh, leave it in Dan. the kitchen, dear, because you, you know how people don't like clear up after them. You're not eating properly, are you? Go on. You can ask Ronnie about that. You're not eating properly. I know you're not. Well, we have about six takeaways a week, me and Ronnie oh do. Oh, my so God. I think it's Ronnie's fault. Well, that's not very good, is it? Yeah, I'll tell you what. No. I'll tell you what we'll do. Seeing as you What's mentioned uh, takeaways, let me have a little look at my calendar. Which afternoon would you like a pizza next week? Well, whichever one you're at free. Uh, Monday or Tuesday is always good. Monday? Let's do Monday, Monday then. Monday for pizza. Monday pizza. What time, sir? Uh, one o'clock. One o'clock is fine by me. Lovely. Monday pizza, one o'clock. 
I'm looking forward to that. Actually, I won't, I won't, I won't have as much as I had last time. Let me tell you, boys and girls, Dan um, is the manager of a club in Ealing that I uh, used to work at on Friday nights, uh, West Five. And uh, he's been there, what are you, two years? Two years now? Two, yeah, just over two years now. Two years, so, six months, I think. Just over two years now. Um, and um, yeah. he's got a little pub as well in, um, I can't remember the area, but where it is now, somewhere in, um, oh God. Cross. Wolfham Cross, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 the job Mr. D W does. He gets up very early and goes to bed very late, and is uh, grabs a couple of hours here and there. As I used to, to be honest, um, I used to do really long, long times uh, when I had a day job and a night job as well. Dan, don't know if I've ever told you about that, did I? I used to work. I for... thought you'd always DJ. No, I, I was a BT engineer. Oh, you did tell me about that because you said the funny phones and you used to charge them for the phones when you didn't have to. <laughs> That's right. Too right and all. <laughs> Nasty people used to get used to get a bill now and again. If there were little old ladies who offered you a cup of tea when you went in, you'd give it all for free. And uh, if they were nasty businessmen who did nothing but moan, then you'd always find something quite leg- legitimately to charge them for, you know, at, at, the, at the engineer's discretion. I love doing that. And then when they'd say, how much? You'd then say, that is, of course, plus VAT, sir. <laughs> I love doing that. <laughs> oh dear Chris. I got no voice. Can you can you I've got this, I've got this ongoing throat problem that I've got to go back for now. I'm kind of ignoring it. Um I went and had a scan at the hospital and everything for this and they found nothing. Um but there we are. I have to keep an eye on that. Okay, yeah. Mon- Monday pizza one o'clock. I look forward to it. I hope we'll we we'll, we'll, we'll run is he free Monday? I hope he's free on Monday, isn't he? He's normally free on the Monday, isn't he? He doesn't yeah. work, so he yeah. should be free. I'll, I'll ask him. OK, then, Dan. <laughs> have a lovely right, evening. Then. How was last night? Was it all right? Yeah, it was OK. We had Mitzi on. She was quite good. Oh, I told you, didn't I? Is that the first yeah, time you've seen her? Good. It's the first time she's done a full show. She's right. done uh, some charity stuff here, but it's the yeah. first time she's done a full show. Very, very Pretty good indeed. Yeah, yeah. Good. Thanks for calling in, Dan. That's right, dear. Take care. All things Bert. Bye-bye. Bye. Tell her. Oh, we love cats, don't we? Hey, my cat's fully recovered from her illness, incidentally, which was a little bit ill the other day. Now, don't forget, you can call in if you want to. Uh, hello to Ronan once again, who's with us this afternoon, only until 12.30, sadly. Only till 12.30. Um, <clears throat> uh, I was off last night, actually. I have one Friday in every free off now. Um, and I'm off on Sundays as well. I, 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 Sundays, um, the job in the Black Cap on Sundays finished. And they've got a comedy night there on Sundays now. Uh, so that's all well and good. But, you know, I was going to share this with you today. Um, I've always been someone who, as I, I, I like to work. You see what I mean? Not really been someone to sit at home and do nothing. And, oh, Marge wants to know, how do you spell Bert? B-E-R-T, my darling. B-E-R-T, OK. Uh, and good morning to David on the Isle of Wight. Good morning, David. Nice to see that you're with us this morning. Hope the children are all right. I've always been someone who, as, as a job finishes, and all jobs come to the end eventually. In the entertainment world, all jobs, doesn't matter what you're doing, all jobs finish at some point. Okay, and when a job finishes, you say thank you very much. You know, thank you for the work. Hello, however long it's been. You know, a couple of weeks' work, a couple of years' work, a couple of decades' work in some cases, certainly for me. And you say thank you very much, and you move on. Unless, of course, you leave first. Okay, for whatever reason, you perhaps you don't disagree with something, or you don't like this, or or something else comes along that you want to try and uh, if you leave first of course now I've always been someone where as a job has finished I've immediately started picking up the phone or going on the internet and looking for a new one over the years I've been quite lucky and Uh, successfully gaining new work. Indeed, some of them coming off Facebook. 
he put a little note on Facebook. Hello, I've got, I don't know, Sunday nights free. Anyone want a, a DJ, a quiz master or a karaoke man on Sunday nights? Please send me a private message. Generally, that's, that, that, that is how I do it. Other people are a little bit more aggressive in, in the way they talk on Facebook. And I've seen other DJs saying, free on Sunday nights, inbox me for details. And I think that sounds rude. Does it to you? Or is that an age thing? Is that an age thing? Book me. I'm free on Fridays. Inbox me for details. No, please. No, thank you. Really direct and, if I may say so, abrupt. I go on there, or have been going on there. Hi. Got a, got a night free, Sundays. Please send me a message if you're interested. Thank you. And I've got several jobs that way. Just by putting on there that I've got a night free. However, <clears throat> this time I, I was going to do a, um, a quiz night. But that didn't happen. Uh, the person whose quiz night it was has now left. <laughs> so that's, that's the way it goes, right? And something happened on holiday on the way back. Where on the way back I thought, you know, I don't want to go back to work this time. First time ever. I've always been away on holiday and couldn't wait to get back to work. This time it wasn't the same. I didn't want to actually go back to work. Now, of course, I did go back to work and very quickly, you know, I've got back into it and everything's fine. You know, I don't not want to be there. But with the Sunday, I kind of thought, do you know what? Just leave it. Leave it. Ask a couple of people, and if something happens, that's fine. If something doesn't happen, that's fine as well. And I've had three or four Sundays off now. And I like it. I also have one Friday off every three weeks or every four weeks. I can't remember what it is now. In, which was last night. And I quite like it. So I think I'm naturally starting to slow down i'm not about to pick up the phone and say right thank you that's it i'm not not coming anymore thank you very much for the work thank you for the money bye-bye not going to do that right but i think as nights finish now i shall leave them unless someone comes up to us all right chris have you got any nights free at the moment then i probably i, I would probably say yeah well, i've got a sunday uh, free at the moment or or something like that i i, I would probably you know, do that. Say yes. But actively going out and looking to replace a night that's no longer there or is about to finish, I'm not so sure. I'd be quite happy, I think, to just to just do three or four nights a week now. And I've never been like that. So something inside me has changed. I've also found that in the last six, seven months, I've become much calmer. Not wanting to rush from one place to the other. Now, you know my best friend, Ron. He's a bit of a rusher. Do you know what I mean? Can't wait to get to the next thing. Oh, let's, we've got to do this now. Da, da, da. Rush, rush, rush all the bloody time. If he's got an appointment somewhere, or maybe I've got an appointment at a hospital or something like that. You know, he said, oh, I'll take you. Um... Um, I'll come and pick you up at two o'clock, you know, for a three o'clock appointment. Well, no, you won't come and pick me up at two o'clock. We go at about quarter past one. Oh, you don't need to leave that early. Yes, I do need to leave that early. I need to, and we've talked about this before. I need to be there for two o'clock. Not just after two o'clock. Not even just before two o'clock, because then I'm rushing from the car. You might get traffic. You might find nowhere to park. You know the sort of thing. I want to give myself plenty of time to get there. I don't want to be rushing from one place to the other. Ron is my best friend, as you well know. And it's, 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 it's become quite obvious we cannot do holidays together. Because I'm taking my time, you know, just taking my time around. 
wanting to have a little sit down here and there, maybe a cup of tea now and again, whereas he's rushing all the time from one thing to the other. Bang, 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 bang. And I can't keep up. Or maybe I can keep up and I just don't want to. So something inside me has definitely changed in the last few months. And certainly on the last holiday with my nephew, that was a completely different experience. And I totally and utterly loved it. Something happened there as well inside of me and something's changed and I don't know what it is. Is this an age thing? Are the people sort of over 50s who have found this has happened as well to them? I'd be interested to hear from you. Whether you're watching or listening live, um, if you are indeed and you want to chat about that, you can call in. My Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. There's also a local London phone number. It's not premium rate, local London phone number. That is 020 eight one double three six three five eight okay O two O eight one double three six three five eight that's if you're with us live and if you look at the clock it's uh twenty fifteen sixty seventeen minutes to one o'clock on Saturday the first of March two thousand and fourteen. If you are watching or listening to a recording of the show you can write in with your thoughts on that. My email address is Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk admittedly for the last couple of years i think i think probably about two years now my my driving has slowed down a lot i'm quite happy to go on a motorway 60 mile an hour that's okay there's no rush what have i got a rush for there's nothing to rush for Going through London, sticking to the speed limit. Do you know what I mean? I feel quite content. Quite happy last night, sitting there in front of the telly. I watched a, a Blu-ray that I bought, which I highly recommend. Snow White and the Huntsman. Have you seen that one? It's a live uh, thing. It's not a cartoon or anything like that. It's live. Really good film. Highly recommended. Snow White and the Huntsman. The only thing is with those Blu-rays, or the Disney Blu-rays, it and half hard to find the beginning of the film. Oh, the adverts they put on those DVDs get on my blooming nerves. So they're you. How do you get to the beginning of the film without going through all the bleeding warnings about copyright issues and then, then all the adverts for all their other films and stuff like that? It's on my nerves. So, I had a lovely night last night. Then I came up here and uh, dealt with an awful lot of paperwork that had been building up over weeks, months even, you know, and music stuff. <clears throat> Because uh, I, I, I still do DJing and I have my music on a hard drive, you know, on the computer... Well, I also have it backed up. But what happens is I put all the new stuff into a folder and I keep putting it in there. And I think to myself, at some point, I'll put it on the uh, uh, backup hard drive as well. And I did all that last night. And then before I knew where it was, it was two o'clock in the morning. Went back to bed. Well, I don't know. Two o'clock in the morning is early for me to be able to go back to bed, I must say. The things I'm actually enjoying more than anything else at the moment are um, the quiz night which I do on Tuesday. Fantastic quiz we had uh, on a Tuesday at the Mayflower in Rotherhive. And we've been getting 70 and 80 players now, which is uh, really good. The guy over there has given me a little rise as well, so I appreciate that. 80 people playing the quiz. Fantastic. But you always get someone... Right? Actually, you don't... I'm not getting it as much now, I must admit. Not getting it as much as now. But when I first started, there were always a couple of people who did nothing but bloody moan all the time. There was one girl in particular. I won't tell you her name. It's, that wouldn't be fair, because she's not on here to defend herself, right? But nevertheless, she did nothing but moan. She was always questioning the answers. And you see, you, you've only got to add that a couple of times when you're doing a quiz. And it slows the entire process down. Now, I buy in the quiz from several different companies. You don't use one company when you're doing a quiz night. 
right? Because people might find out what, oh, oh, he's using them. Then they will get the questions themselves and, and, and win the prize. Now, there's no cash prize in this quiz. The thing is with a quiz, if you start giving out a cash prize and it goes up every week, there's a lot of places to a lot of places do that. You start getting professional quiz players. These are admittedly very clever people, right? And they they watch the internet and newspapers for local quiz nights that are giving away big money prizes. And you never see them until the quiz night. Then they come in, clear out, clear out the prize, and then you don't see them again until the money goes right up. So what this place does, they give away a bar tab. Good prize. A 55 a £50 bar tab, about $75. That's what they that's what they win. A £50 bar tab. In my mind, that's a little bit over the top. I wouldn't give away a £50 bar tab. However, he's the governor, he knows exactly what he's doing, and that's it. £50 bar tab. So that £50 hasn't actually cost the pub 50 quid, if you see what I mean. You've got to look at it like that. Now, he hasn't given away £50 of drinks. He's given away a £50 bar tab, which has probably cost the pub, I don't know, £20, £25. And it works. Every week, someone wins that second prize, a bottle of wine. Third prize, a drink of your choice, a, a pint of your choice behind the bar. And they always, people always start shouting out, oh, I'll have a pint of vodka. No, it doesn't quite work like that. Pint of beer, pint of lager, something like that. And it works very well. And these people, they come in, you know, you've got 79 people in there um, this week. <clears throat> Oh, was it, oh no! It, no, it was. Um, it was I, I tell a lie. It was fifty, fifty-six this week. Fifty-six people this week. The week before was seventy-nine. Now let me tell you: if there were fifty people in there playing the quiz, forty of those, as well as playing the quiz, would buy a meal. Um, the meals in there are not overpriced. I would say probably ten pounds for fish and chips, and they get a. And the meals are massive in this place. OK, so you get a great big plate. You'll have two pieces of fish on there, a great big thing of ch chips and probably peas or, you know, some sort of vegetable on there as well. That's £10. So I think, OK, let's take a, a low estimate. 40 people paying £10 each. It's 400 quid in meals. I don't know what the markup on food is in pubs. I gather it's it's quite a lot. So do you see what I mean? The, the quiz on its own in this particular place, speaking from a business point of view, is not the thing making the money so much. It's the meals and of course the drinks that they're buying with them because they're all they all sort of buy quite a lot of drink. The bar never goes quiet in this pub and apparently it's the busiest night of the week. But you've got to be in the right place. Uh, you would think that, oh, well, you know, uh, young people wouldn't want to do this. It depends where you are. Now, this is rather hive. It's quite a quite a upmarket area. But there are st Tables of students that come in, like two tables of students that come in every week and play this quiz. And you wouldn't think that, would you? It surprised me when I started doing it. I think they're a little bit young to be playing a quiz and they get little teams together. And they try and win. They pay a pound each and it works. That's, I think... What's my favourite night? It's got to be that or the Belushi's karaoke at the moment. So I love doing the quiz night. It's, it's fantastic. Fantastic. There's a little bit of preparation involved at home. As I say, I do buy the questions in. I actually make the music round myself. And um, that changes every week, depending on, you know, what I think of. Uh, we did Disney films the other week. I've just come back from Disney. Right? Uh, we might do this week's music quiz is artists beginning with A. So I will play them 10 little snippets of music. Um, and all the artists will begin with A, sort of uh, ABBA, Aerosmith, something like that. Or I might do titles beginning with um, uh, uh, B. 
for example, uh, so it could be Kylie Minogue, Better the Devil You Know. And I give them one point for the artist and one point for the title of the tune. So it's quite simple. One question, one point, except for the music question, music round, one question, two points, artist and title. And that's it. Each week I read out the four rounds. Okay, two rounds of questions, one point, one answer. A picture round, one point, one answer. And a music round, one, one, one answer, two points. Add them all up at the end, that's who wins. I do know quiz nights that make it complicated. I've heard of quiz nights that are made difficult to understand. Perhaps easy to understand for the guy hosting it, or the girl, of course. Um, and then they run them for so many weeks and they have this, and then if that team wins, they get that, and if you do this round this way, you get an extra thing. Or, and it's so bloody complicated. And you don't know what you're doing. Keep it simple. Keep the quiz simple. And that's what I've done. And it seems it works for me. It's the third quiz I've hosted different in different places. This is the third one. But I only do one. I would love to do a quiz somewhere on a Sunday night. See, I could see, I could see like a quiz on a Sunday at perhaps a restaurant or something like that. You know, um, a pub that serves perhaps Sunday roasts and all that business. And they come and have their roast. And at the same time, the quiz would be going on because we don't rush it. I've already told you, I don't like Russian. We don't rush through it. They have plenty of time. I was talking to someone uh, last uh, Sunday, actually, who hosts a quiz at his own pub. Uh, <clears throat> it was my, um, it's actually my ex-girlfriend and her husband that have this quiz on Thursday nights, I think. And he says, how many rounds do you do? I said, well, I do four rounds of ten questions each. He said, well, how long does that take? Two hours. He said, blimey, after I do ten rounds in two hours. And I'm thinking, I bet you're rushing through that. Oh, dear. Bang, bang, bang. People don't want to be rushed. Take it at a nice, easy place. Don't need to rush through things like that. And you want to give a prize? As I say, you know, don't give cash. Don't give cash. Do it as a, as a, bit, uh, as a, as a bar tab. You know, you get £25 worth of drink. I would say £25 is a, is a very good prize. I don't, it doesn't need to be 50 I don't think. £25 is, 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 is perfectly acceptable. And um, don't rush it. Ten rounds in two hours. Blimey, you must be going some. <laughs> I did have a little look up online. Because I saw um, a thing, an online... Quiz now. I wrote this down. There it is. A smartphone pub quiz, right? Where all the people who've got smartphones, the quiz is done with a smartphone. And they've got buzzers and things like that. And I did look at that. You can look at it yourself if you want to, boys and girls. It's called speedquizzing.com. Okay, speedquizzing.com. And it's a smartphone pub quiz. So. The bloke's reading out questions and he can flash pictures onto the smartphones. And it sounds really good. And I was reading all of it. And then I went look at look at the questions and answers. And there were so many possible problems you could run into. Perhaps the router isn't fast enough and things like that. And they said, we recommend this sort of router. And I thought, oh, it sounds a bit complex. You know, you don't want things to start going wrong halfway through your quiz. So um, I, I shall just carry on what I'm doing. A lot of quiz masters now, they're standing up there with their iPads and their, their tablets and things like that, read them off that. I walk around with a clipboard and a couple of bits of paper and a little light on the top. That's how to do it. <laughs> we don't need any of this technology to go wrong halfway through a blooming quiz. Thank you very much. So that's what I enjoy. I love doing the quiz night and uh, I love doing karaoke nights. I still DJ, yes, and I, I, I'm, I, I like DJing, yes. But I prefer now to do quiz nights and karaoke. I love karaoke. I host karaoke and um, I do three karaoke's, uh, two in uh, Blushes in London Bridge on Mondays and Wednesdays and one at the Laurie Arms every other Saturday in Hamsmith. 
I love it. I just love doing the karaoke. So there we are. And, and good news, boys and girls. My new tambourine has arrived. And it, young hearts, run free. Because the other one broke. I did, I did glue the other one together and it broke again. So I've now glued it back together and left it. Because I, I, I don't think, uh, I'm a little bit worried that it will just fall apart at some point. <laughs> don't forget the email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, uh, Marge says, <clears throat> on the subject of getting older, I find myself going back to my childhood and being in awe of life. Living in the moment is far more important as I get older. Um, yes. Yeah, and you see, did, did, did he get any more likes on his on his um, Bert thing? Let me have a look. He's got 24, so he's now got... Oh, still 24. Didn't anyone like it? Or maybe it takes a while for those to show up, does it? I don't know. Possibly. Um... We don't we don't do this rushing. Uh, Simon on the other white says, I hope you do 60 mile an hour in the inside lane, not the other two. Absolutely. Inside lane. Inside lane, my friend. Uh, not the other two holding us people who are up in a rush. What, a rush on the Isle of Wight? You haven't got a motorway on there, have you? <laughs> How can you rush anywhere on the Isle of Wight? You step out, you, you step, people on the Isle of Wight, they step out their houses, they go three paces and they're on the other side of the island. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Uh, Terry in Leeds says, I'm only 30, Chris, but at the moment I just love staying in and being at home. Going out all the time does not appeal to me. Dealing with hangovers and spending too much money is pointless. <laughs> It does cost a small fortune, doesn't it, to go out now? Uh, let's have a look. Oh, I've been to uh, a funeral this week. A lady called uh, Jane. And uh, she was uh, uh, 54. I've got a little picture of her. One second. There we are. 54. There we are. That's Jane. And Jane used to come to my bingo nights when I was holding them at a place called the Golden Lion in King's Cross, which isn't there now. Nice lady. 54 she was. I didn't realise her, her age was as close to mine as I thought. And uh, it was held in one of those um, little crematorium uh, what do you call them? Cre crematorium chapel type affairs. Lovely music. Uh, she opened, or they opened with um, uh, Over the Rainbow, somewhere over the rainbow. The, the song in the middle was The Wind Beneath My Wings. There was another song, can't remember the other one. And at the end, they played That's Life. Crematorium services to me, a little bit, again, rushed. So I got there. And there was a, a, a big, big family still coming out. And the service was supposed to be a quarter to three. I got there with just a few minutes to spare, about 20 to three. And still the service before them was coming out. And the, I, I could see the ushers trying to say, I'm sorry, could you come this way, please? There's another, another group trying to come in now. And there was um, my, my friend's family sort of at the back waiting to come in to the chapel. And it's it's almost a little bit in, not inhumane, impersonal. Having a service in a crematorium, much smaller, of course. Uh, this little chapel was full up with people, and as as this other group are coming out, there were two policemen. I thought, well, perhaps it was a police funeral, and there was a bloke in the middle of them. I suddenly realised that he had the um, wrist, uh, what they called handcuffs on. So <laughs> I kind of brushed past him. You know, this bloke with handcuffs and the two policemen. I thought, oh, my God, I hope he doesn't recognise my face when I come, when he comes out and beat me up for brushing past him like that. So nice service. Jane, as I say, used to come up to the bingo. And um, 
she would occasionally win a little prize at this this bingo night. I did. Oh, it was great, uh, and the pub was full up. It was a fantastic night that was bingo night at the Golden Lion. That's about three years ago now. So, um, God rest her soul. I know her son very well, Ross. He comes along uh, sometimes with with various different girlfriends uh, to the Belushi's karaoke, and. When his mum died, he, he he sent me a message. He said, all mum's died. And I knew how much it would be to him for me to just turn up. And, uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't matter what you look like. Although I did, I must say, I did turn up, you know, because you're not family. So I t- if, if I'm not family, I'll, tur- I'll turn up at a funeral in just normal clothes. Not tracksuit bottoms, just a nice pair of jeans. And I had a pair of jeans on and a black, like, top. You know, that Armani black top I've got with a hood. I turned up like that and he says... All right, Chris, blimey, where's your suit? He said to me, I thought, oh, no, I should have worn... See, I don't really have a suit like that. I've got this grey thing that I wear. You can't wear grey to a funeral. That's why I put the black top on. And I said, oh, I said, I'm sorry, I was in a rush. And the lady next to me said, doesn't matter, you're here. And I knew how important it it was for people to be there. And I knew how much it would mean to him and probably his mother for me for me to actually be there so uh you know do, do remember that it does mean an awful lot to people if you turn up for their events even if only for 10 minutes i was there for the service i didn't go back for the wait because i had to get ready for the karaoke that night but i was there for the service and actually you know in my mind no it doesn't matter at all what you're wearing there's another funeral uh, next week that I'm going to uh, hopefully go to. This is a much younger person, and we're not quite sure what happened to her. Her name is uh, Philly. There's a little picture of her there. That's Philly O. Now, that picture is kind of how she looked when I last saw her just a couple of weeks ago. Very short girl with with uh, reddish, it's not like ginger hair, I don't think it's ginger, uh, reddish sort of coloured hair. And suddenly saw on the Facebook last week that she died. Not quite sure what's happened to her. But she was always full of life. And she always she always worried me because she would come into one of the pubs I was working with a really expensive camera around her neck. Now, she liked to drink a lot. And usually by the end of the night, she was she was really quite drunk and would be getting perhaps a bus home, sometimes on her own. And that used to worry the life out of me, that did. But nevertheless, a lovely girl. Doesn't matter if they drink, you know. Just worried me the fact that, you know, she'd be getting on a bus like that. And I said, where where do you live? Greenwich. And it's all completely the opposite way from me. Otherwise, I would have dropped her back. I'm not quite sure what's happened to her. But there's another funeral um, that I might be going to next uh, Wednesday, I think. And that one's in a, looks like it's in a church. So it'll be a little bit more personal, you know. I, li- I like big funerals in the church. I think, you know, I-, I should have one in a church, don't you? Perhaps plan it all out before the hymns and the songs and everything else. I don't think I'd want everyone wearing black. Just come in your own clothes. Obviously not a pair of white Calvin Kleins or something like that, you know. But <laughs> decent clothes. So that's uh, that's my uh, kind of funeral news this week. Anyone else want to call in this evening, uh, this afternoon? You're welcome to do so. Do it quickly, though, because I'm going to finish up soon. My uh, call-in number for Skype. Skype is all one word. Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or the local London phone number, 20 8133 Six three five eight zero two zero eight one double three six three five eight. Oh, Wendy, Wendy sent me a little message. Uh, she's uh, she likes uh, the short videos we do. If you want to know where to find the short videos, just to go to um, my Facebook. That's the best place to go. Join me on Facebook. Uh, it's Chris Reardon UK. And on there, you always see when I've got a new short video out. It's usually Monday to Friday every day. Or Twitter. I also put them on Twitter now as well. Whenever there's a short video, join me on Twitter. My Twitter username, again, is Chris Reardon UK. All right? And Wendy says, I'd like to see you um, sitting at the piano singing a Barry Manilow song. Actually, Wendy, I don't read music. And um, <clears throat> I, 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 I would find it difficult 
to play the piano as an accompanist and sing at the same time. I know that sounds stupid because you have seen me make up little songs and sing them, which which I, I can do that. But I generally can only play in a limited amount of keys like C, G and F. Anything that involves black notes, I, I get uh, a bit difficult using the ones with black notes on. Uh, hello, Simon on the other white. Good evening, sir. Hello, I just thought I'd take issue with you. We have got a motorway on the Isle of Wight. You haven't got a motorway. And why do you need a motorway on the Isle of Wight? It's only about three miles across, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I should know. It's about 24 miles by um by that 16, something like that. Is it 24 uh, miles across? Yeah. It's oh. probably a bit more. Actually, probably a bit more. Bit, bit, <laughs> I should, no, should I live in here all my life? But... A motorway on the Isle of Wight? Well, I never knew that. Well, technically, it's a dual carriageway. Ah, but, so you've lied to me. It's not a motorway. Well, Does it say M? Limit, but there's a tr- tr- trouble with there's a <laughs> there's a thirty mile an hour speed limit at one end of it, yeah, a forty mile an hour at the other. So you've got about a quarter of a mile to go woof, up to seventy mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, I use it every day. <laughs> oh, Simon. <laughs> I love it, mate. Thank you for letting me know, Simon. <laughs> okay. I'll see you then, Chris. All right. Cheers, mate. Bye. So there we are, a small motorway on the Isle of Wight. That's all they've got. That's all they've got. Uh, yeah, let's uh, finish off then with an email from James. Who said, oh, sorry, I was just talking to, to uh, Wendy, wasn't I? Yeah, I... I, I, I I would find that very difficult. I can't do I did actually try it last night when I was off last night, trying to play it was even now and singing at the same time. And I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. My 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 piano playing is limited. It is limited. However, if I've made up a song in my own head and then I can I can usually do something with that, yeah. James says, Hi Chris. Um you mentioned Barry Manilow and I saw a piece in the newspaper. I thought, why does Manilow have to justify being old? Don't these idiots saying this think they will be old one day too? Yes. Yeah, they're always going on. They, 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 a lot of people now running media. Newspapers, BBC, magazines, who are ageist. I'm sorry you are ageist. Taking... Brilliant newsreaders off reading the news just because they've reached a certain age. Why? Happened to Moira Stewart. Was it? Who was the black black news lady with a curlier? Is it? I think it's Moira Stewart. She was brilliant, but she got to a certain age and they kicked her out. Why? Because there's a lot more substantially behind them than you've got with some of these blonde bimbos. I have to, I'm sorry, ladies. That's not a general term I would use about ladies. But blonde young bimbos on the weather who probably, they, they know nothing except reading off the auto cue. There's nothing behind there. It's all fake. I hate fakeness. You see it on all these reality shows. Fakeness all the time. Fake, 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 fake. Can't stand it. I gather there's a new reality show starting. Celebrity Driving School. Where celebrities, Z-list celebrities, take people out and teach them to drive. How boring does that sound? Boring. (laughs) There's been nothing good on the telly since they took Dad's army off. I'm telling you that now. Unfortunately, that is repeated on Saturday nights on BBC Two. <laughs> James says, also, I saw one of your short videos and Ronnie was saying that mobility scooters don't go any faster than four mile an hour. Unfortunately, James says, that's just one type of mobility scooter. Some mobility scooters go up to 10 mile an hour. These scooters are meant for rough terrain and at that speed, some people are rather irresponsible. Uh, they are. I swear they're going more than four mile an hour. I've nearly been knocked over a few times. <laughs> 
I think Millie, when people upset Millie, she switches her switches her motability little scooter. She switches that into maximum speed and runs over their feet. She did that to some bloke in a restaurant who wouldn't get out of the way, didn't you, Millie? <laughs> Talking about the weather, it's been raining so hard round here. It's opened up a couple of sinkholes round here, and one of them opened up on the central reservation of the motorway. Well, yes, uh, sinkholes are a bit of a worry, really, aren't they? You know, you could be walking along, and suddenly you just fall into the earth. <laughs> um, three Telecom, that's the company three, who have a mobile uh, telephone organisation, don't remind me of them. I've just come off them for as I've ever been complaining to them. And on Twitter too, as their transmitter masks keep breaking down where I was. And it would be down for weeks at a time. And I didn't want to know. And in the end, I came up to the end of my contract. I ended the contract with them. And they were begging me to stay. Begging me. Yeah, I had exactly the same. I'm going back about 15, 16 years. Their customer service was absolutely dire. The worst I had ever experienced. But when it came to leaving them, they begged me to stay. Absolutely begged. You should have heard the... It was, it was pitiful. Pitiful on the phone, listening to this, this bloke uh, in India, he was. He must have been in India. Um, who was begging me to stay with three. I I left. It didn't end there. They still kept sending bills and things through the post. I just ignored them in the end. I think customer service should be the first thing they do. That's from James. Thank you, James. And nice to hear from you. Now we are, boys and girls. That's all from the show today. OK. Uh, I think we, there was another message from Marge I haven't read yet. Let me have a little look here. There it is. Oh, we haven't played Marge's chicken audio. That's right. We nearly forgot that. Right, Marge has sent... Uh, we did a, a little video this week of um, me showing you how to make a chicken out of a, a tea towel. Did you not see that video? Ah, oh, well. You see, you've got to keep up with us. The short videos you can find at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Chris Reardon UK. I think that's right. Hang on a minute. Do you want me to look that up for you? YouTube.com Maybe it's... Maybe we can drop the word user, I think now. I think they got rid of that. Yes, they did. Uh, if, you, if you type in YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK all right, you should come up with my YouTube channel. And the short video, United Kingdom Talk Tuesday, the 25th of February 2014, is the one where I show you how to make a chicken out of a tea towel. Okay? And chickens make noises. And on the show on Thursday, Thursday the 27th, I actually took that to the quiz night, the, the cameras of the quiz night, and we did various people making chicken noises. Marge has sent this in of her making chicken noises. Let's have a listen. Of course, I've grown up on a farm and right. I've got a pet let's, chicken. Let's just start that again. Now we aren't there, Marge. Hello, Chris. You guys are playing chicken sounds. Of course, I've grown up on a farm and I've got a pet chicken. I'm trying to recall different sounds that they make. So here we go. These are the real chicken sounds. The chicken is happy because she's laying eggs. She's not laid an egg, but she's been laying eggs. She goes, <laughs> Now she's laying an egg, and she's laid it. I mean, she just got through laying an egg. She goes, Now, she's out and she's eating grass or bugs and a hawk is flying over. And she spots the hawk. Here's what she says. <laughs> and the rooster, he goes, 
I'm not too good with a rooster, but I had a rooster one time. He would go, and he almost fall over backwards. It was so funny. <laughs> anyway, those are chicken sounds. <laughs> and anyway, there's different sounds, but that's about all I can do. <laughs> Have a great day. See ya. There we are, Marge, sending us in some uh, chicken sounds there. <laughs> we love Marge. I love it. <laughs> That's it from the show today. Thanks very much for uh, watching and listening, boys and girls. Don't forget the main site for the show you'll find at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That's the main site for the for the long show, which is this one. Okay, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You want to watch any of the short videos, then go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Uh, Facebook, again, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And finally, the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You have a lovely weekend. I'll see you next week for a live show. All right, bye-bye now. <laughs>